Hi. Uh, today, with us, we have Murli. Uh, he had got, he's a, like a polymath. He's good at math, physics, chemistry, biology. He's going to probably, he's going to the math camp right now. And if, if uh, it happens, he might represent the country and win a medal for the country. He's also had the opportunity to represent the country in the astrophysics, but he has done well in the biology Olympiads, pretty much physics Olympiads, and the state level, the chemistry Olympiads. Now, what's exceptional is in CFL's 15 year history, he's got the best KBP rank, rank number five, or in rank number five. And more than that, Mundi is an extremely approachable and a humble student. Today, we are here to learn from him how to be exceptional student, exceptional person, and to push yourself to the very best possible. Murli, uh, I want to tell you, and one of the things that amazed me, of all things, is that you're good at it first. Second thing is people come and tell me that you're really humble about it. The two things have made you extraordinary. Great at the subject, and you're humbleness as a person. So, tell me how to get started with all this. Yeah, so it all started like when I joined CFL for foundations. Okay. And that really got me interested. Before that, I was just like the, the school kid. Like just going to school, coming back and then playing. But then foundation like really got me interested in like all subjects. Because all subjects are taught in foundation. Yeah. So, and the teachers here, they were like, they made you get interested in stuff. Like all the subjects. And it from the first itself, I had this aim that I wanted to like, get clear Olympiads and get good at it because that's great yeah because that's like the pinnacle of yeah. like for whatever you can do as a high school student so I started preparing for all subjects like that only and it's I read like stuff that was more than that, what was there in the school textbooks like the NCRT textbooks like it might be like Campbell biology for biology or for math there are like several good problem books and stuff like that that's how you got yeah so more like, like uh it's easy to give up, right? Yeah. And you're taking a Math Campbell or your Campbell, uh, Physical Biology Campbell book. And let's level up when you take up that biology. What made you not give up? For me, it was like more like a challenge, you know. Like, it was more like about not giving up. Okay. Because if you give up, then you'll be like everyone else. Like, uh, like the majority actually. Like, yeah. you simply go happy with what they have. Yeah. But you should never be, you should try to be the best at whatever you are. Yeah. So that, that just stopped me from giving up. So when you had questions, when you had doubts, I'm sure you had them. Mm. Who did you, how was your, what is your approach to this problem or to those doubts? Yeah, so for example, in maths, like, first of all, we should devote as much time as we can to a problem. Okay. O only then we should approach someone else. So my first point of contact with me would be my friends. Yeah. Like if I felt that someone was better than me at that topic, then I would approach him. It might be even be seniors. And after that, even if they couldn't clear it, then I would ask, for example, we need sir for biology or MPN for physics, something like that. Now that you got the Olympiads, when you were in 8th standard, did you know what it would take for you to get to the Olympiads? No, not really. Like, I I actually underestimated Olympiads, like, from first when I was in 8th grade. But then, when I gave my first Olympiad, I really understood, like, how difficult it is. And thankfully, I gave it in 8th grade because I had that time to realize how hard it is. Okay. So after that, I started preparing like extremely. I upped my preparation after knowing how hard they are. In CFL, there's this Ramanujan contest. Yeah. Did it help you in any way? So even though I didn't participate in any of them, uh, because I was coming from one piece. Yes, so, right. yeah, but then I asked one of the teachers here to get me the papers so that I could solve them in my home. And that helped me a lot. For a parent or for a student uh, who got their children now in 8th grade, they probably are in that mindset, saying that I want my child to do or my son to do or daughter to do the board level first and get good at it. Only then try the higher thing. What do you say to that? No, I would say like you always need to up from the beginning itself. Like if you aim for boards, then you might actually land up somewhere lower than that. So there's this usual saying, right? Like if you aim for something very high, you will at least get close. <laughs> so it is halfway. Through. Yeah, I will be at least halfway. Through. There must have been some some of the people who have inspired you, somebody in the family, somebody in your friends. Who do you think has inspired you the most, and how this has changed your career? Yeah. So first of all, my brother. Okay. 
like even though there wasn't like he didn't know about these coaching institutes and stuff he got into nit and then he got into his so and he was always like he he used to always say like aim for the best like whatever you do it, it needn't be science at all like whatever you do you should learn to be the best at it so that that simply somehow drove me and even like the especially there was a math teacher in cfl called dinesh yeah. he he inspired me a lot in mathematics like even he had this saying don't be mediocre at whatever you do like he always used to give problems that are harder than what you can tackle so that that simply helped that helped a lot yeah let's say there's a student eighth or in high school right now wants to plan for the olympiads or study for the olympiads what is your message to them and what are the different stages of the olympiads yeah so um the science olympiads you can give them only one year in 10th grade so there's the junior science olympiad which you can give early yeah when it comes to junior science olympiad you need to be good at all subjects yeah so if you if you like if you are a, a cfl student then if you focus on your foundation yeah. and try to go a bit further than that, yeah. then it should be possible to like do yeah. good at the junior science olympiad yeah. coming to maths olympiad it's all about problem solving okay. like some people focus too much on theory but they don't solve a lot of problems but the more problems you solve the the better you get at it and there is this some people feel that they don't have sufficient theory to tackle something but whatever you can like at least do something with the problem at hand like experiment with the play around with it it will teach you something so what are the different stages of the olympiads so the math olympiad starts from iuqm in the Indi- uh, indian olympiad qualification for mathematics and after if you clear iuqm then there is uh, directly indian national maths olympiad in mo and after you clear in mo there is a camp yeah. imotc which will be held in bombay and after that there are team selection tests and in that test and they through that test they select like five pe- six people in maths yeah. to represent the country it's almost same for all other other okay so now you're going at the camp what's going to happen at the camp so in the camp there will be lectures okay. like it need not be limited to olympiad mathematics they might even go a bit further than yeah. that and yeah there'll be team selection tests and hopefully a lot of fun yeah right. so uh, team selection test how do the hard they conduct it so there are two practice tests okay. they contain uh six problems okay. three for a uh, half a day okay and you have two practice tests and then three like full fledged tests and they judge your performance based on those tests so for the students who are listening to this right the question papers of the olympiads probably have seven questions six six questions and they each are marked at how many marks 17 17 marks uh Can you tell them how many marks an average student scores and how much of a topper score in the Olympiads? Yeah, so 17 questions and uh six questions. Sorry, six questions and 17 marks. That's total of 102 marks here. Yeah. So, I heard that the highest this time was 70 or something. Okay. And the average is like around 2 or 3 marks. Yeah, it's it's a subjective test. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yes. So, that that's the average, 2 marks. So, for the students listening to this right when we at cfl tell that uh the 90th percentile in the j main is at 30% marks or for example a 5000 rank in uh, karnataka ct is at 30% marks their parents are like horrified solo marks but when you really hear that the average at the olympiad is 2 marks parents are like i don't know what the reaction parents have but it's astonishing to hear that you know that's the level of competition at the olympiads that are average in the, of the best students who compete in the olympiads the average marks is around 2 i think the, quali- the the qualification marks what are the qualification marks for the next round so like for it, they again divide it into like juniors and seniors yeah. juniors have i think 17 that is one question as yeah. qualification and seniors had are uh, 20 27 okay so it's like uh, pretty much you can score one solve yeah. any one problem one problem yes, three, yeah yeah uh, must be fun yeah like when when i told my parents like first when i wrote alum pads they as out of how much is it i told 100 and to how much are you expecting i was like when i gave it last year i was like 19 they're like what 
<laughs> so then I had to explain them everything, you know. So that 19 years of qualification yeah. is they didn't know am I right? Pretty much. And you, they don't know why I realize how long you're struggling to get yeah. 19 marks. So tell me, it must have been when you're preparing for the Olympiads, there must be been a long time that you sat on one problem. It's the longest you sat on one problem. Uh, so like I don't sit like on one problem, like I distribute it in a week. Like if I have like three unsolved problems, I try like two hours each per day yeah. over a, over like five days. So you can say like 10 hours. 10 hours to say. Yeah. But then sometimes, usually I don't get it even then. Because like after around five hours, I'm pretty much sure that I won't get this. But still I try it like new ideas and stuff. Then I ask for hints from my teachers. I go online on AOPS and then look up for the solution. What's the longest you ever sat on a problem? Oh, I don't have any record. You like sat down and said three months. I've solved thought about this problem for it. No, nothing like that. I don't remember. So I I had uh, asked this student to Ankit Prakash, who was uh, one of the students who had cleared the math camp and then gone and represented the country, and he said that the longest he sat down was like the whole day trying to solve one single problem. And I'm talking to the to the JE aspirants and the J students who clear JE, uh, they said that if you can sit on a problem and think about it for 30 minutes, uh, then you're pr probably at the 99th percentile. Sitting, you know, continuously on a problem without giving up is one of the great skills that the Olympiad students have and the J aspirants have. Uh, biology Olympiads. How math and biology are like two different streams for most people. They're interconnected to you. And that's what like most of them feel. You can't be a math student and a biology student at the same right. time. Yeah, so there is this thing, so if anybody asks you which course you're taking, I told them I'm taking PCMB, so you're going to be a doctor. <laughs> that's what everyone do. Yeah, but, but then that, that seems to be the trend like only in India for some reason. If you see in other countries, they don't uh, bifurcate between subjects like this is man, this is physics. And even at the research level, today most of the things they are interdisciplinary. Everything. Yeah, everything. Everything. Every, yeah. From every device that's interconnected. But uh, how do you see it? Yeah, so I, I like them for different reasons. So I like math because of its reasoning, problem solving skills. And biology because life simply amazes me. Yes. Like, and even physics, astronomy, because the universe amazes me. Yeah. So for me, it's not like they're interconnected, but then I have my own reasons for liking each of them. Yeah. So at CFL, uh, like, Murli is pretty great, great at math, physics, you know, chemistry. And I think even if he just wakes up and gives a JE test, he'd probably be in the 99th percentile and way above it. But he's not going to write the JE, right? That's the most amazing part about it. That a student will be good at all the subjects, will do the Olympiads, and I don't even know if it's going to write the NEET. So what about the NEET? Are you going to write the NEET? No, I can't write it because I've been born with for the camp. For the camp. Yeah. So you're going to be where? What is your aspirations? You're now you're planning to go to Australia as well for the uh, yeah. international, international science, school. science school. What are your plans? What are you planning to do? So if if the dates for the IMO and the international science school are clashing, so I have not yet decided. Like if I get into the team, perhaps I'll you know prefer going to IMO rather than to the ISS. And and then you probably be in the Institute of Science. Yeah, and I'm planning to do undergraduation. Yes, yeah. What's your routine like? I know you're an early person, night person. If whatever your routine is, how do you keep that consistent? So, I used to be an early person before and now I'm a night person. I don't know why I switched, but yeah. So, uh, when I was an early person, I used to wake up around 6, 6 ish. And after waking up, get freshening up, and then I used to sit, start studying. And might be few breaks like once in two hours or something. But nowadays it's it's not even that because when you're in a problem, sometimes you don't even feel like getting up. So, but when I used to prepare for KVP, I I, I used to take like two hours breaks. Yes. And I used to, when the exam was approaching, I used to always make it a point to take at least one mock test every day okay. and analyze like where I went wrong. Some students feel that. Uh, they should study first a lot of things and then take mock tests. Yes. I, I I don't agree with that. Like, okay. you need to take mock tests even if you are not like completely done with the subject because it's more about the habit of taking it, like the habit of giving an exam. Yeah. 
and that helps a lot during the exam day it helps you be stress free it, it doesn't make you nervous easily yeah and now i'm a late person or is it routine is is just like flip the other way so around. you study till you come I, uh, let's, let's say you were going to school yeah and then go home and just to study till 12 I, one I, i wouldn't recommend being a late person if you have to wake up and go to college yeah so I started this only in the holidays like on CFL stuff. I I sleep at around 12 12:30ish. And I I make it a point to get at least like 8 hours of sleep yeah. because I don't know a sleepy head is not the best head for taking yeah. nap problem anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So and I wake up and fresh enough start studying again. How um let's say instrumental or how were your parents in you getting interested in math and science yeah so my parents i think it was an excellent decision for them to put me into cfl like they they heard some people talking about cfl and they came here to enquire that's one of the best things they did and also when it comes to buying books like they never sh- like for example some books they cost a lot but they never say like no to books and i think that's very important because at least for me books played a very important role than any other resource and it's always recommended that you learn from books yeah your brother uh, you talked about and him uh, asking you to aspire for the biggest level possible what the other role he played for you he used to clear my doubts and all like until he was with me like yeah. in my house then he went to bangalore bangalore yeah. he he is to clear my doubts if i had some difficulties with some concept he would help me which and he since he had read all the books like which which were there in our house he would say which book to refer if i had some doubt so that was his and i think i developed my reading habit from him seeing him read that much even i felt like i should read and it's not just about like subject books even story books or anything for that much that helped yeah and most of the students who go abroad in pc right now and and we as management and teachers as well find it hard to tell students that you don't need the digital media you don't need to, you know to go online to learn what is your take on that i totally agree i know you totally agree on that but how would you tell the other students that it's it's a good decision to do i know it's it's hard to convince them but for some reason like it seems to draw them yeah, in of course yeah but i it's it's more of like a distraction because if you're a fast learner then those videos are essentially slowing you down True. like they repeat the same things again and again and you can't study at your own pace and at the end of the day the book is the primary source right like even those the digital media it is taking its content from some book itself it's always good to go to the beginning like to the prim- um, yeah. primary source my messages for the parents who are listening to this or the students who are listening to this i if there are a few things you want to get is that you have to solve a lot of problems from 8th standard pretty much 8th standard is the time at even at cfl we say it's time to you know push or to motivate your children to prepare for the highest level possible you know your highest level may be way different than murli's is it might be as high as getting in harvard or mit or it might be high as getting into an itk or the top colleges in the state whatever it is whatever is your highest level you need to start pushing for it and you have to realize the way to study is to solve a lot of problems and if you can get to sitting and thinking about a problem without using any digital media or without resourcing resorting to your friends or parents for solutions that's the best way to think about it even if you don't get a solution for it your thoughts or your thinking process is the one that's going to be developed also you have to realize that you have to give a lot of examinations murli here if you've known him like you know he's cleared the olympiads he's got probably the fifth rank in kvpy which is not going to be there for the next years the fifth rank in kvpy is one of the best rank cfl ever had in its 15 year history Now you have a student like him interested in math biology physics chemistry name in astrophysics uh, nature on its own it comes from one thing you see all you see wonder in the subject and when you see wonder in the subject the subject doesn't become boring so as we end this and i want to tell students you know every few years 
few students come to CFL and they redefine the barriers on what's possible. A few years ago, it was Sumit who had come and gone to the Olympiads level to the math camp levels. After that, Aditya Prakash had come and represented the country in the Math Olympiad. Pratyush Paduwal had represented the country in the Astrophysics Olympiad and got a medal for the country. Then we had Shreya Pai, we the very best at the Balaji Olympiads. And now we have Murli. These students, when they come and they break barriers, and what Murli has done is even more exceptional. He's been good at the Math Olympiads, good at physics, biology, astrophysics at the same time. And that's making the students listening to this and the parents listening to this, that your students, your children, my children can be the very best that they can be. I want to congratulate Murli and I want to thank Murli for being his best and breaking those barriers. Thank you, Murli. Yeah.